Sky Sports, and here's Baron Tony Uranta. Thank you, Jomo. It's World Cup fever, and I'm welcome to Sports News. The Super Eagles of Nigeria have settled down nicely in their Insutuki team base camp ahead of the start of the 2018 FIFA World Cup. A welcome reception organized by the governor of Insutuki and the Minister of Sports in the Stavropol region was held for the delegation. Officials of FIFA and the local organizing committee also conducted the team's arrival meeting before their training session this evening. The three-time African champions will train again on Wednesday before moving to Kaliningrad on Thursday for their opening match against Croatia on Saturday. Meanwhile, the Meerkats of the British Zoo have been busy predicting the results of Thursday's World Cup opener, unanimously suggesting host Russia would get the better of Saudi Arabia. The mystic Meerkats at Drayton Manor Park and Zoo near Tamworth in Stratfordshire have successfully predicted the results of sporting tournaments in the past and also suggested England will pick up a win in their opening match against Tunisia on Monday. And a team of female soccer players in Russia will, for the first time in history, be the ball throwers in the opening match of the World Cup. The 14 girls play football themselves for a team in the Russian region of Sastarstan. So throwing the ball back rather than kicking it is going to be strange enough for the 13 to 16-year-olds without the limelight of the thousands of fans watching their every move. And as World Cup squads and their fans fly into Russia for the start of the tournament on Thursday, so do police officers from all the competing nations to help deter hooliganism and the threat of any militant attack. The country has deployed thousands of police to the 11 host cities to deal with the influx of potentially rowdy soccer fans and other security threats. But they will not be alone regardless of any political differences with Moscow. The 32 participating countries have sent officers to help Russian police spot troublemakers and prevent fans from having run-ins with the local authorities. And Spain coach Julian Lotku will take over as Real Madrid manager on his three-year contract after the World Cup. The Frenchman Zinedine Zidane stepped down two weeks ago after leading the Real Madrid to a third consecutive Champions League title. Lotku, who last signed a new contract through to 2020 with Spain, spent three years with the European champions as a player. He spent a season as coach of Real Madrid's B team, Castilla, from 2008 to 2009 for taking over Spain under 19 manager in 2010. And that's it on Sports News for tonight. I'm Baron Tony Ranta, and you join me back for the rest. Thanks, Barong. U.S. President Donald Trump says his historic talks with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un that ended in an agreement were tremendous. The signed document includes a pledge from Mr. Kim to rid the Korean Peninsula of nuclear weapons. The meeting was the first time a sitting U.S. president has met North Korea's leader and caps a remarkable turnaround for the two. This is the historic moment. The U.S. President Donald Trump met with the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Shaking hands and walking side by side, the two leaders proceeded to a one-on-one -on -one meeting and then a bilateral meeting with their top advisors. Shortly after, they emerged for a working lunch in which President Trump announced they will be signing a document. We had a, a really fantastic meeting. A lot of progress, uh, really very positive. I think better than anybody could have expected. Top of the line, really good. We're going right now for a signing. The document ends a nuclear standoff on the Korean Peninsula. So we're signing a very important document, a pretty comprehensive document, and we've had a really great term together, a great relationship. Uh, I'll be giving a news conference at 2.30 which is in a little bit less than two hours, and we'll discuss this at great length. In the meantime, I believe that they'll be handing it out on behalf of Chairman Kim and myself, and we're both very honored to sign the document. Thank you. The joint statement, signed at the end of the historic summit in Singapore, gives few details on how this goal will be achieved. However, President Donald Trump says he expects the denuclearization process to start right away. But the sanctions against North Korea will still remain in place. You'll be seeing everything in just a little while. The letter that we're signing is very comprehensive, and I think both sides are going to be very impressed with the result. A lot of goodwill went into this, a lot of work, a lot of preparation. I want to thank 
uh, everybody on both sides, uh, Secretary Pompeo and all of his counterparts, they were absolutely fantastic. Although the breakthrough made at the summit marks just the start of a diplomatic process, it could bring lasting change to the security landscape of Northeast Asia, just as former U.S. President Richard Nixon's visit to Beijing in 1972 led to the transformation of China. And the main news again. President Muhammadu Buhari today apologized to the families of the chief MKO Abiola 25 years after the annulment of the June 12th presidential election. He also conferred on him the highest honor in the land. Also today, Southwest states held a memorial rally in honor of Chief Abiola as they unanimously commended President Buhari for righting the wrongs of the past. And the U.S. and North Korea today revived their long-lost friendship following a historic meeting in Singapore where they made pledges on nuclear disarmament. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Bonyato. Do have a good night. Nigerians are ready for democracy. Nigeria have elected their president, and Nigerians are not prepared to go for another election. The truth of the matter is that you do not have two sunrises in one day. Even in Africa, the sun rises only once a day, and that is the way it is. The people have made it very clear that that is what they want. The election was pronounced fair free, fair and peaceful by the international observers and by the government own observers themselves. I won in 20 states and I won the, the, the one third of the vote in 28 out of 30 states and at the federal capital territory of, of Abuja. There's nothing else.